We go out to Los... Los. <laughs> <laughs> we go out to uh, Oregon. <laughs> I was going to go Los Oswego, Lake Oswego, where we find Ronnie Bennett. She's an ex-wife. That's the bad thing. The good thing is she happens to be a great ex-wife. So, anyway. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. I'm okay. You know, tired all the time. I always feel tired. Is that a, a, something about getting old? How you old just... are you? Hmm? How old are you? 79. Well, okay. You know, you've been around that long. Your body's probably tired. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, but I drink coffee like crazy, and that doesn't seem to help. But, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll... I wish I'd brought my coffee with me. It's not here. Oh, well. Here, you want some of this? Um, <laughs> Don't I wish. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you been? How are you feeling? Getting I'm along. fine. She's getting along singing a song. Uh, She's sort of, uh, yeah. <laughs> More or less. Uh, uh, you know, you write a blog. She writes a blog called timegoesby.net. That's where you'll find it. Uh, and uh, she it's basically her her uh, what can we call it her specialité is uh, is getting older mainly because she's doing it and I guess anybody who gets older is kind of an expert at it you know well the, I'm not really not and that's why the subtitle of my blog is what it's really like to get old because in our lifetime in America this isn't true in most other countries Discussing getting old, getting tired, as you mentioned, um, things going wrong, all the stuff that goes on with old people, we weren't allowed to talk about, oh, we can't talk about things that aren't cheerful, you know? Yeah. Nobody would let you talk about it. So you don't know about all kinds of things that aren't necessarily very treatable or even need treatment um, because, hey, that's about getting old, and so you can't do that in public. And what I have done over 15 years, I didn't start out to do this. I didn't know I was doing it, but it's become this. Much of it, thanks to my readers, is it's a safe place for people to come and talk about those things that you can't talk about with your friends who won't let you talk about having wrinkles or, you know, or things not working the way they used to and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's a safe place and has been for years now where people can talk about those things. And it's even these days you get rushed through the doctor's office so quickly that, you know, if you've got a pain in your toe, well, maybe that's not quite as important as you can't breathe this week. Right, you know, right, something. exactly. Well, you know, I mean, like I have numb feet and I find out that a lot of people my age have numb feet. Neuropathy, you know, Neuropathy, yes. you know, and uh, uh, I, I just go, you know, it's like uh, you always used to say that the Betty Davis said they're getting a link for sissies, and that's really, I'm, it's my motto. You know, I mean, uh, it, 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 there's, there are little pains, there are aches, there's this, there's that, you know. I, every year I notice that the, the pill box where I put my pills, uh, <laughs> it's, it's starting to overflow now. You know, where before it was like one pill. Hey, take the cholesterol <laughs> pill. Okay, good. You know, so <coughs> I'm like a pill factory now, you know, and I go to pick Yeah, up, I have know. a lot of them too. You know, I got a new one. One of the big things about cancer and chemo is that both of them reduce your appetite. Chemo does all by itself. Cancer does all by itself. And, of course, together, um, that's they, they suppress your appetite. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the last thing you want to do if you have cancer is lose weight, lose muscle mass, because then you're going to die. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I have to fight it constantly because I'm never, ever hungry. And so I must have mentioned this on our little show before, that sometimes I just perfectly know that if I put one more spoonful or one more forkful in my mouth, I'm going to throw up. And so I can't, and then, you know, weight goes down. You can, I can lose a pound, a pound and a half overnight if I don't eat enough the day before that yeah, day. Yeah. So, and, so, uh, isn't the, so that's very difficult. Yeah. Um, and then what? I got a new pill, and I said thanks a lot. All I need is one more pill for that damn little box. I've come to hit two of them. I keep one for morning, one for evening. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it turned out that this was a pill 
all this time, two years I've been going to this place, all of this time I've been complaining about I don't have any appetite and I have to force feed myself. Uh, they gave me this bill. It's the tiniest little bill you ever saw. And I'm supposed to cut it in half. <laughs> 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 and uh, guess what? I wake up hungry in the morning. I haven't done that in a couple of years. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. You know, well, you it's know, still not a maybe, big deal, maybe. but... It's better than it was before. At you, least I don't feel sick when I think about food. You know, I went and lost all that weight, like 60 pounds, and I'm beginning to wonder if that was a good idea, that if, in fact, you aren't fatter, it takes longer for you to die from some kind of wasting disease. Uh, but yeah. yeah, but not many people die of a wasting disease. Of course, I remember there was a uh, there was a, a gym in San Francisco that got assailed for their advertising campaign, which read... Uh, when they when the aliens come, they're going to eat the fat ones first. <laughs> so, uh, so here, come on, that's why you lost the weight, huh? Yeah, that's why I lost the weight. Uh, I can tell you, there's a wonderful nurse where I go, at the oncology lab, who's in her early 60s, <clears throat> and she's been working in oncology her entire career. Yeah. And when I first started, you know, she said, "Eat cheese, eat eggs, eat meat." I need lots of protein, lots of fat. Mm. All the stuff I avoided eating all my life. All right. of a sudden, she wants me to right. eat a whole lot of it. <clears throat> and I complained to her once that this didn't seem like a very healthy diet to me, that there were hardly any greens in it, because if I fill up with vegetables, there's no space for fat and, and protein. Right. And she said to me, she said, Ronnie... The, how did she put it, Ronnie? Cancer will kill you long before the diet will. Do what I tell yeah, you. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, so, you know, but I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I just, um, uh, you know, I just, I just notice as you get older that I, I finally, re as I said, I realize why sometimes old old people are accused of being grouchy, and now I know why they're grouchy. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're in constant forms of just small little niggling pains you know what i'm saying it's yes, nothing it's like there's not anything that's uh, overwhelming where the doctor goes well you're going to have to have an operation you know didn't have anything like that but you know it, it's it's ridiculous i i just um um well anyway enough of my complaining you know i'll tell you what i did do i went to something the other night and i walked out after a half hour uh, and you could have gone there. You could have been there. You were welcome to be there at that party. It was the 43rd year of uh, WPLJ, which they're putting out to oh. which they're putting out to pasture. They sold it to a religious organization who's going to turn it into God music all the time. And uh, so they held a big goodbye for WPLJ. Are they going to get rid of the call letters? Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, and uh, I lasted about a half hour before I had to leave. Because to begin with, I was there with somebody who had been there on and off for a period of 20 years, later on, after us, okay? And he knew everybody. And I didn't know anybody. And the people we worked with, except for Kareem Baldessandro, you remember the name? She was the music director. Say it again. Kareem Baldessandro. Oh, she gee, she was she was a music director. She came up to so me. That was Ann Sternberg for a while. Yeah, but that was it. You know, uh, that and Jimmy Fink, who I don't think was in that first wave that was there. Uh, we were in the first wave. We were in the beginning of that whole thing. And it was like I almost I didn't exist. You know, because I wasn't part of their top four, you know, their more popular music, uh, more mainstream format you know but i but i went back to the beginning and i just i walked out depressed i just you know i went fuck this you know i well it, you know life goes on and different things become important and i think that when we say it's not like the good old days us old folks yeah well that's how it works but if you're if, if you're saying goodbye to something and you're holding a party to celebrate that period of time don't you go back to the very beginning and say, hey, these are the people who were there? But it's like we didn't even exist. 
you know, yeah, because we were that pro- we were that wacky we were that wacky progressive format, you know. <laughs> ah, yes, we did take a lot of grief for that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, I it's just that I would figure that I would go in and they go, oh, Alex Benny, you were part of the first wave, you know, you were the very beginning of what we are now celebrating the end of, all right. And then, uh, so I well, I just left. I just I said it's too noisy, it's too crowded, and it's too. Uh, you know, you sound like such a cranky old no, man. No, no, but this wasn't being a cranky old man. Be, I would have I would have put up with that if there was some feeling that I mattered in this group. And by the way, of the original personalities, I was the only one who showed up. And there are other ones still, still alive. Vince Kels is still alive. Michael Cascuna is still alive. You know, so. I Aren't was, they? I was the only one who showed up. Yeah. Well, you know, you don't know what condition they're in or how much it means to them. I have a lot of jobs that don't mean a thing to me and two or three that I love. Well, you know what? I, I, my whole thing was I didn't want to go. And I didn't want to go because of the very reason it turned out to be, that I, I, I felt it would not be my party, okay, it would, it, or that I would be part of that party. That it, this was going to be a party for all the people who, you know, were there later, you know, and and I think that's probably what those other people felt too, and that's why they didn't show up. But, well, you don't um, know that. Maybe you know, have been busy. Uh, uh, I left, and then um, my friend uh, Albert, who came in for this thing, um, uh, sent me a picture, and they put up a photograph of me with John and Yoko, and he says, "See, they they celebrated you." And I wrote back, and I said, "They weren't celebrating me. If John and Yoko weren't in that picture, they wouldn't have shown it." <laughs> you know. It's okay. Yeah. You know that was then, and this is now, and the world is a whole new place. Well, you know, I so and, you know that's but, one of the well, interesting things about being yeah. old in the younger generation. Yeah, is that we bring along, uh, yeah, uh, with us the memories of our uh, youthful adults would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we think it hasn't changed in forty years or fifty years. It. The world has nothing oh, 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 to do with oh, no, what we I understand it. Look, I understand that. By the way, I got to tell you something. This is amazing. I worked for two major radio stations in New York City, WMCA, right, and WPLJ. What did WMCA become? I'm sorry. What does what? What did WMCA become? What is it to uh-huh. this day? Huh? I have no idea. It became a religious station. And now this one is. And now this one's going to church music. I'm a fucking pariah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, I wonder and, if they're if, getting rid of the call letters because they stood for, or at least we said they did, white port and, and lemon, lemon juice. juice. No, I think they got rid of it because they wanted to give their own call. I don't know K God or <coughs> you know W God or whatever. I don't know what they're going to call it. Uh, but. Uh, and I also, everybody was going, oh, it's going away. Oh, the legacy of this station. And I'm thinking, what fucking legacy? This thing has had five formats over that time. You know, <laughs> it was WPLJ. That was the call sign. But the nature of the station kept changing and evolving with the time or doing what it felt it had to do in order to survive. So what are you, what are you, what are you moaning about? Are you moaning? Which format are you moaning about? You know? And so this whole idea, oh, the WPLJ is going away. Eh, it's, you know, all things go away with so time. So there were some people there who were old enough to remember what you remember. Not really, no. No. Well, then who, why would uh, I mean, I have been, have been there to lament it not being I, that I was way being anymore. introduced by my friend uh, 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 Albert uh, as, oh, this is Alex Benton. And he was with uh, WPLJ in the very beginning. And they go, oh, really? You know, I mean, like they didn't hear of it. And then as the evening went on, he just said, this is my friend Alex, because it didn't seem to matter to anybody. And uh, I, after a while, I got to feel like his plus one. <laughs> well, that's okay, too. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yes, sir. I think you're making more of this than you should. Well, I was just hurt. People I, just can't remember what they weren't alive for, Alex, <laughs> you know? You know, um, um, actually, if I think about it, I'm more proud of uh, Midnight Blue than I am of uh, PLJ. Okay? If I had to say I did something in New York, only because, you know, of the nature of the fact that we were tweaking whiskers on the cat. Wasn't Howard Stern there when we were first there? No. No. 
Howard Stern was at, um, where was he? WNBC is where he was, but not while we were there. Okay. He came later. He came after, I think after I left New York. No, no, no. He, he was there while I was in New York. He had to be. Uh, and he went from WNBC over to, I can't remember what the name of the station was, but uh, Mel Karmazin uh, hired him over there and, right. uh, you know, turned him into a star. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Did you uh, see the interview with him this week? Which one? The big one. And I guess it's in the Times from yesterday. Oh, I, no, I didn't see that. No. <clears throat> no, he's got a book out, so he, you know. Well, that's okay. Well, I mean, don't put that down. You can write a book, and uh, then you I, can go do I, those shows. I, I got a whole story for you about that book, um, but it, it 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 it's too personal a story for somebody else. So I'll let them tell the story. But somebody else thought uh, that book and got it published and all that, and I was not getting any credit for it. So uh, who's not who's not getting credit? Well, for I'm it? not gonna. I don't want to say. Okay. Uh, but uh, there's somebody that we know who came up with this whole idea, pitched it to the book companies for Howard, got it published, and is not getting any credit for having even been part of it. So I, rare, they rarely are the. I mean, that's a broker, and they're rarely in the book you know, named in the book industry. Yeah, well, this is not a broker. This is a guy who was uh, a biggie. At he CB. behaved. He was acting as a broker. He was acting as a broker in the yeah. business. Yeah. And you don't get mentioned for having made a phone call, you know? <laughs> well, you do get mentioned by somebody who is respectful of you and is happy you did this for him. You know what I'm saying? You're having a terrible Thursday morning. I'm having a horrible Thursday morning. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck? Come on. You write about old people. You got one here. What the hell? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, me too, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. I just... You know, I, d I don't like talk about about the idea of uh, emphasize the positive. I mean, there's even some Disney song about it. Accentuate, Accentuate the positive. positive. Johnny Mercer wrote that. Okay, well, it was, you know, in some Disney movie or something. But, um, you know, mostly I just want to... Um, um, I, I, I just don't think about that much. Yeah. Um, and I don't, well, you know, I used to jump out of bed. That's, you know, a lot of that's thanks to you, that you always had 6 a.m. radio shows, so we had to get up at 4.30. Yeah. And that hung on for most of the rest of my life, yeah. that I'd wake up that early no matter what. And, and well, I, afterward, after we broke up, I also had a bunch of um, TV shows that I worked on for a few years. It went on the air at 7 a.m. or something like that. So I have lots of practice at going to bed early, getting up early. But now when I wake up, after a good night's sleep, eight, even nine hours, God, it's hard to get out of bed. <laughs> and I used to just yeah. right out of the bed and ready to go. <laughs> well, the thing is, I find that at my age, uh, I, I, I'm nursing enough grudges that my nipples hurt. You know, so... Uh, is is that a reference I should know, or you just made that up? I just made that up here. Okay. But I think somebody else probably said it before me. I would imagine it's an obvious joke. My son tells me mm -hmm. that recently when he you woke know that up sounds weird to me when you say that. My son tells me. Yes. <laughs> he tells me that um, his son, my grandson, when he woke him up to get ready for breakfast and preschool. Mm -hmm. Just asked him. He said, "Daddy, why does how to, it was it such a cute way to put it? Why does why does morning come so fast, or something close to that? And it does seem to when you first wake up. He's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like you just fell asleep. Well, uh, well, I notice, and this uh, again is, I guess, part of getting old. When I used to wake up in the morning, I would do this. Oh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Now I go." Fuck. <laughs> well, you know, I used to think coffee was important to get me going. Yeah. Nothing compared to now. It is crucial now. Getting through this 30-minute show we do yeah. that I forgot to bring my coffee cup over here with me is driving me crazy. Well, you only got about six more minutes, so hold on. <laughs> hold on. Uh, yeah, I the coffee doesn't do anything for me. I'm doing Starbucks Plus. 
I wouldn't go near Starbucks, but that's another well, story. Well, this is one of those, you know, I put them in the, <coughs> and it's, it's plus, and it's got double the caffeine. doesn't do crap for me. but Sure does for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, uh, this the whole process of getting old, you say that not everybody's an expert on it, even though they're getting old. Oh, no, I don't think so, because we haven't been able to talk about it. Yeah. And a lot of... <clears throat> Sorry, um, and because we're sl slowly beginning to do that, because of course the number of old people is growing, and people know a market when they see it. Yeah. Um. So, um, it there's a little bit more to it, but almost all of it is is how positive it is, how wonderful it is to get old, and how terrific it is, and you can now go. They, you always see photo, photographs online of very movie star attractive old people with gray hair walking on the beach. You know, you've seen all those yes, photos. Yes, right, right. And, uh, and that, that's what getting old is like. It's not. And it's okay to talk about what's wrong. And nobody, people are really nasty about that to people who try to talk about it. And someone, <clears throat> someone pointed out on my blog this week is that young mothers, they get together and they talk about raising children or if they're even going through the pregnancy. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, I apologize. And, uh, and if they go through a divorce, you go to your friends who've been there and you talk about that. Mm -hmm. Your parents die. You've now got, you're at the age where other friends' parents are dying. So you get together with that group and talk about it then, uh, uh, when you get there. And there's no reason why you shouldn't do that about getting old. You did it for all those other major events in life, but now you're at a brand new one that the culture still says, yeah. no, 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 nobody's old. Old is wonderful. Well, no, it's not. I can't get out of this chair. Yeah, sometimes. but what they, yeah. what, what I've been saying is that when, when we, as we get older, uh, the topic of conversation at dinner changes from. In, at various ages to our age where invariably you start talking about medical plans you start talking about something that's bothering you or ailing you uh, but that's what goes on in old age in the same way that you know if you're pregnant there comes a point where no you can't get out of chair unless somebody pulls you out well this is know? why this is why i don't believe in god if there were a god as you got older things would get easier and better if there was a compassionate but a God. God gets better. Huh? It doesn't mean the pains aren't there. It doesn't mean that you aren't slowed down and can't walk as fast as you used to or carry as many groceries all at once in from the car or anything. But there are plenty of things that are better about being. I look back at things that worried me for days that, may, that I even went to shrinks for now and again. And what the hell was I doing? That's nothing. Yeah. You didn't, I didn't need to make such a big deal of that. It wasn't that important, but you thought it was at the time. Oh, I like it. I like the last words of Marlon Brando as he was dying. And he said, what was that all about? Yeah, well, I kind of feel that <laughs> way, but we don't know he really said that. So be, be very wary of people's last words. They almost never, never what well, they said. If, if, wanted let's them say, say he didn't say it. It's a great story because oh, I yeah, imagine okay. that you do look back on your life and go, what the fuck was all that about? I mean, I'm amazed now that I look back on it, how fast it's gone by. And when I was mm -hmm. a kid, it moved at a snail's pace. You know, my next birthday was eons away. Now my next birthday is any day now, you know. <laughs> I know I so I mean, know. that's that's how things start to change. And uh, uh, although I've discovered, I don't, I, it hasn't happened often enough that I can have a reasonable conversation about it yet. Although I will when I work it out. But just in the last two or three or four weeks, there have been some periods of time. I was going to say perhaps it's when I'm doing tedious things like mm -hmm. filing paper that you need to keep for some reason or something. Um, but when I'm doing that sort of thing, or you know, there were, I was making something on the stove and it, you had to stir it all the time, and my God, is that boring. 
and time just creeps by, just creeps by in a way I haven't felt in years, and almost always I felt like what you're describing. And this is the first time in many years that I felt that, that time was dragging for me. Really? Wow. Hey, listen. I don't know if that has any significance yet, but there you are. I look down at the clock. Guess what? Another wonderful time has passed here. And we've <laughs> we've talked that we've in case people mind that we talk about getting old, fuck you. Fuck you. This this is what you know we're talking about. And it's important. And it's important that you go over to her blog and read timegoesby.net because uh, she really, really is following it and get, and tells you a lot about what it's like and other people do too on that site as well so it's good it's a, a wonderful wonderful group of commenters ladies and gentlemen she's a former wife but uh, she's now a present uh, regular two every two week uh, feature on this program is ronnie bennett thank you so much ronnie thank you alex